Bill Gates has done a lot to help uh, slow or stop the spread of malaria, which is a serious disease um, spread by mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are the deadliest animals on the planet, if you didn't know that, and they uh, also carry dengue fever, which threatens 40% of the world's population. So it seems the way to control these horrible diseases might be to actually go for the, the source themselves, the mosquitoes. And there's a variety of different ways that scientists are doing this. Correct. We're now genetically engineering and modifying these mosquitoes to try and attack the diseases or the spread of these diseases. We're talking about a parasitic insect. Mm -hmm. And like you said, the deadliest animal in the world. It kills over 750,000 humans uh, per year. And it's, it's an incredible number when you come down and you think of it. And th what they're trying to do now is they are uh, inserting and infecting these mosquitoes with Wolbachia, which is a bacteria that basically suppresses things like dengue fever. Mm -hmm. And they're conducting studies that involve releasing these mosquitoes to a confined area for research to see if by mating with regular mosquitoes they can somehow suppress the spread of this disease. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a twofold kind of multifaceted issue because, for one, science is obviously trying to advance the you know abolition of deaths by this disease, but. I have to say I'm a little bit scared because what we think we understand in a lab could have very unintended consequences if released into the wild. And that's kind of the way I look at, you know, when I was reading this article, there were a lot of questions that came up. I, we, we have mosquitoes, you know, what about the gene flow into the wild population? What about um, coming in contact with non-target organisms and how would they interact and uh, oh. agricultural issues and accidental ingestion? Just a lot of issues that we can't necessarily predict in a lab. Mm -hmm. So these, uh, like you said, there are a lot of different ways that we're using science to kind of combat these diseases. Well, there is the Wolbachia bacteria, but there's also, mm -hmm. which acts as a kind of a birth control. Yeah. And then there's also uh, different ways of enacting what they call mosquito genocide, which would be to make it so that the, the larva of mosquitoes uh, never progress to the age, they die before they reach the age where they could uh, bite, bite someone, or to also uh, breed the mosquitoes in a way, or modify the mosquitoes in a way, sorry, that would make the females wingless. The females are the ones that bite. Uh, right. Uh, the, the, uh, they do talk about genocide when they talk about very localized, um, you know, c killing off a community of very specific uh, type of mosquitoes, but at the same time, we're also kind of toying with the idea of uh, xenocide and killing off the entire species, which again, could we don't know how it could impact the was, chain yeah, of... I'd like to ask you, d does that affect the environment? How, what does that, what is the ripple effect of that? Well, just, I mean, I, I don't know, and I'm speculating a lot here, but uh, imagine that mosquitoes constitute 20% of a bat, a specific bat's diet. If we completely uh, abolish mosquitoes as a species, mm -hmm. what, you know, that bat is going to have to supplement his diet with 20% calories from something else for energy because right now we don't know what purpose biologically mosquitoes serve except for controlling populations by spreading diseases. Mm -hmm. So we don't necessarily know what could happen to an ecosystem if we kill off all mosquitoes. That's definitely the idea that you know we're, we're playing with here. Mm -hmm. um, I think that I also am very skeptical because all of these studies are done by the same company. Yeah, it's, oh, um, yeah. O Oxitec, o Oxitec, um, I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce it, but this is a commercial company that is patenting this technology to release GM mosquitoes in a population, so they're relying on governments to pay them money, so to buy this technology to release mosquitoes into the environment of their countries where malaria or dengue fever are prevalent diseases. Mm -hmm. This is something that when R&D and studies are all made for, you know, paid for by a corporation, you have to be a little bit skeptical. I'm not saying they obviously, there's no doubt that people want to um, end dengue fever and malaria, but when personal interests, you know, for a company come in, uh, you have to be a little bit skeptical, I think. Okay. Um, is it ethically more responsible, let's just say, Let's say that there isn't, let's remove that level of skepticism mm -hmm. from the, this one corporation. Um, is it ethically more responsible to modify the mosquitoes to stop affecting humans? 
or is that also? Well, uh, let me kind of like answer that with a question. Uh, if you were in an area, so this happened in Guatemala and in uh, Malaysia, where some of these mosquitoes were released into the population to see the effects of what would happen. Uh, control, relatively controlled environments, small localized areas. The populace wasn't made aware, except in Malaysia. And even then, people said, I'm against this. I don't know what effects this can have. I don't know what these mosquitoes are going to do. I don't know what is going to happen. You know, what if these viruses become more virulent because all of a sudden we have these, you know, kind of fighting mechanisms for them, these GM insects. Is it ethical to release the mosquitoes even though there are a few people who are against it? Would it be ethical to conduct experiments with you know, I'm unvoluntary not sure because victims? Because not everyone has volunteered for this this test per exactly. se. It's not really a test if it's in the public and it's already out there and it's already being practically applied. Yeah. So I, your there are some gray areas in here that I'm not. Yeah, positive it's it's about. a very it's a very interesting issue. It's definitely something that I encourage people to read up on because again so many layers, so many subtleties as to what could happen, so many questions come up that it's uh, fascinating. And I love that science is working towards um, eradicating these diseases no matter what. That is a worthy cause that I will support and endorse. And it's, it's just the, you know, the, the unintended consequences. We never know what can happen once we take things outside of a lab if we, they aren't properly Would it be worth controlled. that, though, to, to control this horrible, fatal disease? Mm -hmm. What if the disease evolves? What if, uh, you know, by kind of engineering and genetically modifying these insects, this virus strain evolves into a more virulent one? What if, uh, you know, there are, what if human immunity changes because of it? These are all really good questions that you might not consider at surface uh, level. It, it's just, yeah, reading, and the more you read, the more questions you're gonna find because it, this, this kind of issue elicits those kind of larger questions on a more global scale, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, it is, there are many int intricate parts of this, in, in, many moving parts, many different consequences that might uh, come from something that you may not have intended. Uh, what questions do you have regarding this uh, particular fight or tactic to battle the diseases of malaria and dengue fever? Um, and what should we consider when thinking about these. Let us know what you think below in the comments and please be sure to subscribe.